I can learn to.com, putting the fun back into learning. Electron structure, the first 20 elements. In my atomic structure video scribe, we learnt that orbiting the nucleus are electrons, and these are in energy levels. In the first energy level, up to two electrons can be found. The second energy level can hold up to eight electrons. The third energy level can hold up to eight electrons initially. Then, when two electrons are in the fourth energy level, the third energy level can then hold up to ten more electrons, making 18 in total in the third energy level. Let's look at the periodic table. The rows are called periods and the columns are called groups. The bottom number, the atomic number, tells us how many protons the element has. In an atom, this corresponds to how many electrons the atom has. In period 1, we have hydrogen, which has one electron in the first energy level. Helium has two electrons, so that first energy level, or shell, is now full. So now we move on to period 2. Lithium is in group 1 and has three electrons, two in the first energy level and one in the outer shell. Beryllium is in group 2 and has four electrons, two in the first energy level, two in the outer shell. Boron is in group 3 and has five electrons, two in the first shell and three in the outer shell. Carbon is in group 4. It has six electrons in total, two in the first shell and four in the outer shell. Nitrogen is in group 5 and has seven electrons, two in the first shell, five in the outer shell. Oxygen is in group 6 and has eight electrons, two in the first shell, six in the outer shell. Fluorine is in group 7 and has nine electrons, two in the first shell, seven in the outer shell. Neon is in group zero, it's a noble gas, and has 10 electrons, two in the first shell and eight in the outer shell, so that shell is now full. All of the noble gases have full outer shells. This is what makes them so unreactive. They do not need to react, as they do not need to gain or lose electrons. All elements in the periodic table react because they want to achieve the same electron configuration as the noble gases. They all want full outer shells. They do this by donating, receiving or sharing electrons. This is called bonding and I will explain this in more detail in my bonding video scribe. Let's look at period 3 from sodium to argon. Sodium is in group 1 and has 11 electrons, 2 in the first shell, 8 in the next shell and 1 in the outer shell. You should now start to see the periodic pattern. The period or row tells us how many energy levels or shells the element has and the group tells us how many electrons are in the outer shell. This gives us a clue as to how the element will bond with other elements and how reactive it will be. So magnesium is in period 3, group 2. This tells us that it has three shells, two electrons in the outer shell, and has the electron configuration 2, 8, 2, as it has an atomic number of 12. Aluminium has the electron configuration 2, 8, 3. This tells us it has three electrons in its outer shell, as it's in group 3. Silicon is in group 4 and has the electron configuration 2, 8, 4. Phosphorus is in group 5 and has the electron configuration 2, 8, 5. Sulphur is in group 6 and has the electron configuration 2, 8, 6. Chlorine in group 7 has the electron configuration two, eight, seven. And then argon in group zero has the electron configuration two, eight, eight. We now move on to the fourth 
energy level. For potassium, this has the electron configuration 2, 8, 8, 1. So it's got one electron in its outer shell. And then calcium is 2, 8, 8, 2. This has two electrons in its outer shell. Using this pattern, we can ascertain that cesium with an atomic number of 55 is in period 6, group 1. So has six shells with one electron in its outer shell. Iodine with an atomic number of 53 is in period 5, group 7. So has five shells, seven electrons in its outer shell. The further away the outer electron is from the nucleus, the easier the electron is to lose. So cesium is a very reactive metal. If it loses its outer electron, it will then have a full shell. The closer the electrons are to the nucleus, the easier the electrons are to gain. So fluorine is a very reactive gas. It reacts with almost anything in order to gain the electron it needs to get a full shell. If you're wondering what happened to the extra 10 electrons that can fit into the third energy level after two electrons are put in the fourth energy level, this happens from elements scandium to zinc, the transition metals. The electron configuration of the transition metals is covered at A-level chemistry, not at GCSE. This concludes this topic. Thank you for watching.